Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Interstage Window. I am here today with Landon. Say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. Ah, oh my gosh, Landon's back. I missed you so much. Oh, hey, Naomi. So happy to have you in the chat today. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Landon's back, y'all. <laughs> so long, I've missed you all. Who else was I going to talk to? Too. I don't know. So, um, but tell us, tell everybody the the big update. I mean, I sort of mentioned it last time, but tell everybody what oh, you were yeah. doing while you weren't here last week, because this is very oh, exciting. That was also going to be one of my favorite things, but I'll come up with another favorite thing. Oh, no, no, you can I, do it for favorite things. That's fine. No, it's fine. I got it. I, I moved. I bought a home. I moved. I am now officially an adult slash homeowner, which seems very serious. <laughs> um... And then I packed up my crappy little apartment and moved into my beautiful new home. And that is what I have been dealing with for the last week. And it's wonderful and amazing and the most stressful thing ever. <laughs> Welcome to the, the wonders and horrors of home ownership, Landon. <laughs> I had, so as part of like the claiming of making it mine, I got a new dishwasher because the dishwasher that came with the home was older than I am. Um, no joke. <laughs> and I was like, what do I do with an old dishwasher? And then I realized that you have to pay people to take an old dishwasher away. Yeah, and usually. Like, this never would have happened. I mean, I you could, you could curb it. alert it. You could curb alert it. But if you have an HOA, that'll make them real mad. Yeah, and I have an HOA. So yeah. I was like, we're going to wait until I start putting like, you know, gay flags up before I start pissing them off. Yeah, I mean, that's um, probably the battle that you actually want to fight, not about dishwashers. <laughs> but I was just like, oh, this is an adult thing that I have to do now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You actually have to pay. If you have an HOA, you have to go pay the haulers to go take your, like, large trash yeah. away. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I can't just, like, you know, leave it on the side of the road and watch it disappear anymore. Nope. Nope. You sure cannot. You sure cannot. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't have an HOA tie, but um there's a the neighborhood that we might move into someday has one, so that's that's why I know a little bit about it. Um, and the only reason yeah. I have an HOA is technically it's a townhome, which means anything outside of the house I am not responsible for. True. So, so it's not your yard um, really. You don't like own the land. New, yeah, if I need a new roof or siding or windows, none of that is my responsibility, which makes it slightly easier with where I'm at in life and it just makes it like, okay, cool. I'm willing to pay a organization much money to take care of all of that for me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how condo condo um, establishments are around here. You basically are paying your HOA because you're not responsible for the outdoors yeah. or the grounds or anything. Yes, I'm like, I guess I'll feed into capitalism. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it will still be better than having a landlord as far as that goes. So I it think you will enjoy that. that. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, I wanted everybody to know that, but I think we've we've uh, we've gone good on that now. What are we talking about today, Landon? While I get hey, the game going, let me know. About, we're talking about one of my favorite things, which is building a plot from scratch. <gasps> oh, what oh my gosh yeah, yeah. so Just letting us yeah letting us build from from the ground up and what do we need to do what do we need to keep in mind how can we do this successfully what is too much we're going to be discussing all of it yep all that stuff all that stuff because um landon is the expert plotter and at this I, point, um, I've made a lot of plots for role play groups. So we're going to, you know, deep dive, share all of our tips in regards to that stuff. I love that I'm the expert plotter. I just don't know how to shut up about things. <laughs> <laughs> is that all it is? Is that all it is? I don't know. I feel like there's more to it than that. Or we wouldn't be doing a whole episode on this, right? I guess, we'll ha I guess you'll have to listen to find out. I guess so. <laughs> All, All right. right, but first, Karen, tell me your favorite thing. Okay, so favorite thing. So last night, we only got to watch half of this movie, but it was good enough that I think it is still worthy of a recommendation. So my favorite thing this week is Psycho Gorman, which you might have seen the trailers for, um, but you might not have. Oh, shoot, I don't have enough money. Oh, well. Um, which you might have seen the trailers for, or you might not have, but... Uh, I found this movie so freaking entertaining. Uh, it's basically all practical special effects, which you never see anymore. 
So for that reason, it was like super, super exciting to watch. And also, it's very, um, it's very campy, right? It's like a sci-fi fantasy movie, which you barely ever get those anymore. So it's sci-fi fantasy with all practical effects and it's got child actors. There's two child actors that are the main characters. And I have to say, they actually do a damn good job, which you almost never see in movies. Um, so that's my, that's my favorite thing in my recommendation today. Okay. Psycho Gorman. If you have a chance to watch that, you should absolutely be given that a watch. We're going to hopefully finish the rest of it tonight. I, in the chat, linked to the movie poster. It looks pretty badass. It, it's super badass. Um, the, it's it's hilarious, right? Like, the, the main bad guy, the titular character, Psycho Gorman, in the movie is basically this badass alien that kills people. And, um, and essentially, the way the plot starts is the little girl and her brother dig up Psycho Gorman's crystal thing and... The girl owns the crystal, and therefore she gets to control Psycho Gorman, and she goes buck wild with it. Uh, that sounds like I. That sounds. I love plots like that because I also love like the sci-fi plots that where it feels very familiar. Yes. Um, but it's if it's done well enough, it doesn't feel like it's stealing. Yes. It just feels familiar, which it sounds like that this has the potential to do because i'm like crystals i'm like dark crystal and the fact that everything else is like is traditional um sci-fi makeup rather than special effects i'm like all of this sounds really like 90s nostalgia but done really well yes for sure there is a lot of um 80s and 90s references in there and it's a little bit ambiguous as to the time that it's taking place although i don't think it's supposed to be present day um so for for that for that if you are on like a nostalgia kick it's really good for that too that's awesome okay good yeah so that's my that's recommendation good. and my favorite thing this week what's yours landon well other than my brand new house <laughs> um i did a, i have been wanting to start this hobby for probably six or seven months now uh, probably closer to six months six months now, but I have told myself that I cannot do it for as long as that I am in the old place, my old apartment, because mm -hmm. um, I was just going to move everything, my kitchen was too small, uh, things were just going to get messy, that I would just be overwhelmed and not want to do it, all of this kind of stuff. Mm. So I was like, I have to wait, I have to wait, I have to wait. Well, I have moved in, which means I no longer have to wait. So last night, I made my very first candle. Oh, how did it go? Really well. She's a little, she's a little not as scented as I wanted her to be, and a little too bright in color. Still messing with stuff, but overall went really, really well. And it made my inner like little witchy heart happy, and it made my little like hands being able to do something and create something really cool. And so I'm very stoked about it and it's currently lit and it is staying lit so i'm like that's a, su a successful candle if hey I, I mean it does the candle things right even if it's not exactly how you envisioned it you exactly. got to share pictures and um and progress updates as you kind of learn more about candle making that's not something i've ever tried but i find it really fascinating i like watching yeah. candle making videos and things like that I know, yeah, for me, it's, like, I'm, I'm still practicing with jar stuff, but, like, I know some people, especially when they're, when they're in their witchy element, they like to bake or cook things or, or make things like books of shadows and, and all of these kinds of stuff, and for me, I was like, this is a good way to create love and intention in something that I love, because I have always collected candles, so I'm like, now I can make my own. <laughs> yeah, oh, and that should be so much cheaper, too, than buying them. Right? So like, far. I assume. I assume that, that making them, once you get all the initial supplies, turns out to be ridiculously cheaper. Yes. So far, I'm like, oh, this is, this will go, this will go a ways. <laughs> For the price of one candle, um, I could make four or five. <laughs> nice. I love that. So, yeah, it's, it is a good thing. Definitely have to share pictures. I really, I want to see them. Like, one, the lit, the lit one that you have. Um, take a picture I, of it and put it yeah, in the no, in the cafe. I will post it on the Discord. Yeah. Cafe. Also, Naomi, uh, you should be surprised that I collect candles. Who knew? 
Who knew <laughs> that me, a person who's obsessed with fire, collects candles? <laughs> Can't imagine. So surprised. So much I shock. I don't have a candle problem. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. Um, I was never super, like, into candles, I think, because um, I have really horrible allergies. Actually, I've been under control for several years now. But growing up, I had really horrible allergies. So since too much scent would set me off. And so it was very, I was very particular with what kind of candles I could really get and what kind I really couldn't. And to the point that a lot of times I just gave up because it was like a roulette. Like, is this candle, once I light it, gonna cause me problems or not? Mm, that's yeah. a, yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. Like conceptually, I like candles, but in reality, eh. <laughs> a little bit more complicated. Yep, for sure. Oh. Well. I will keep that in mind for when I, I'm sure at some point I will want to make you a, a Karen flavored candle. Oh my gosh. I, I do, regardless, I want to know what the Karen flavor is, right? Like even if, um, even if it's not something I can actively burn, I have to know what, what actually, what it is for you. I will think on it and I will, I will let you know. Um, for when we end stream, I posted pictures in the cafe, so. Oh yes. Okay. Fabulous. <laughs> Oh no! Oh I'm no! Can you can you turn up your Discord volume? Is yeah, your Discord volume low? I can do that. Is that a little better? Y'all, let us know in the chat. Does she sound better now? If that doesn't work, I'll I'll turn up the volume on my end for for like where you're coming through the desktop. But I bet that'll fix it. Yeah, hopefully that that is good because I'm turned up all the way. So hopefully I'm not uh, blown out anyone's speakers. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Jane says yes, Alrighty. yes. Okay. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Okay, that fixed it. Yay. Should we talk about today's topic? Yes. How do we want to get started with today's topic with plotting? With plotting. Well, shall we define what a plot is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess that's a good a place to start as any. So, so yeah, Landon, from your perspective, like. What is a plot? Like, how do you, when you look at a piece of writing, what makes you go, that is a plot? It's the trajectory of a story, right? It's the, it's the arc or it's the path that the story is taking. No matter how straightforward that is or twisty turvy, it's the direction that the story is going. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way that I could describe plot, that when you make it to the end of the story or the end of the book or the end of the thread that you look back and you go, that is the direction that happened. That is the path that I followed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think also for me, the plot can be the place that you start from. I feel like I see that kind of a lot um, in regards to writing out your plot is it's not necessarily the entire arc, although it can be. Um, and you definitely need to be thinking about that. But like if a piece of writing is a plot, I tend to see like, I tend to, tend to want to see like where we're starting from, you know? Yeah, okay, so it's very interesting that we have that, it's almost a, I don't want to say opposite, but you have like, it's a starting point and I have, it is the entirety of everything. <laughs> I think it can be both, right? It depends on what context and what it is you're trying to do. Sometimes Absolutely. it's just a starting point and sometimes it's the whole, the whole shebang. Yeah. And that's, I think that was also important to make that distinction when we're talking about plotting or creating a plot for a group RP. Yes. That you're not planning out the entire trajectory of the story. You're not planning out where is the RP going to be a year and a half from now or even three months from now. Although having those ideas is mm -hmm. good and should be part of the process. You're not planning that out individually. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess what we should say this for today, a lot of what we're talking about is really geared towards mm -hmm. folks who are either creating or participating in group RPs. Mm -hmm. um, but I am going to try to sneak in some stuff for our one on one role players as well, because I know that um, there's plotting involved in one on ones, but it's a little bit different in the sense that for a one on one role play, you don't have to. You can pants the whole thing and like it's OK. It's not a problem. Um, and you can't really do that when it comes to group RPs. You kind of can't pants the whole thing. You have to plot at least a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll also acknowledge that we aren't really necessarily talking about plotting within a group RP. It no. really is. This is for admin and mod sort of uh, starter kit. 
Mm-hmm. However, I think that that would be an interesting episode if people would be interested on hearing that. That way we can dedicate and focus more towards one-on-one and dynamics within a group RP, but that's not today's episode. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, we probably should do that as another episode, though. I think that would be a good idea. Sounds good. Yeah. All so, yeah, right. We're talking to admins today, mostly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think also it's important as a player, if you're not an admin or a mod, to understand what it takes for an RP to be set up or why things, especially if you're looking for a group RP, what sort of things that you should be looking for in their plot and what should be th- thought out uh, will give you a helpful insight into how that RP is run. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Because for the most part, you should be able to read the plot and kind of know if this is your cup of tea or not right so how do you do that um how do you figure out how what to exactly to look for so i guess the first thing that we start with now that we know what a plot is is how the when and the why Mm -hmm. so how do you make a plot when do you make a plot and why are you making a plot yep yep um and i think that this is can be both simple but it also takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice Basically, you are making a plot because you want people to think you have your shit together. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I mean, I guess that's true, right? It's going to be hard to attract players to your game um, if they look at your role play and they think like, well, I'm not really sure they know what they want. So how am I going to deliver that? You know, because when you're joining a group role play, you want to at least know a little bit about what's going on because you want to figure out where exactly you and your characters can fit in. And if you can't sense a direction from the people that are running the role play, then it's it can be very difficult to figure out like where exactly you can potentially fit in. Absolutely. And it's kind of like it's also one of those things where it's like, hey, if you are starting an RP without a plot, It's kind of one of those things where you invite someone over to your house or you throw a party and you've done nothing to plan the party. (laughs) Kind of just like, hey, we're having a party at 5 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. on a Friday. And then you don't provide snacks or drinks or dinner or anything. Like, yeah, or music or games. You're just like sitting there and just expecting other people to figure it out for you. Right. Like if you walk into a party and the host is chilling there playing Call of Duty, doesn't invite you to play, didn't set out any snacks, doesn't tell you where the booze is. It's like, what kind of party yeah. is this? <laughs> and it kind of sits there and goes, well, you were the person who agreed to come to a party, so you know what a party involves, so why didn't you bring stuff? It's like, well, you, you're hosting the thing. And it's like, but you didn't ask me to bring anything. I, don't, I didn't know I was supposed to bring anything. And there's nothing that you're providing, so what the hell? <laughs> yeah, you as the RP mod are hosting this party and you need to figure out what you need for the party yeah so don't let Um, people show up to your party and not have any like doritos or anything that would be awful (laughs) like so you need to decide is this like a chill hangout play video games party is this a game a board game party is this a murder mystery party these are the kinds of things that as a mod you need to figure out and your plot will lead you in that direction yes exactly hey goat so happy to have you here um thank you so much for joining us today yeah absolutely i i think that as as the mod that's exactly what it is you're the host of the party so that's really why why having a plot is important and i and i just believe that it's very difficult to attract people to your game if you have a plotless game now i do see people setting up plotless role plays like that is a thing that some people do and some people set up um but i don't know of anybody that joins those those games and those games then last any length of time right so if you set up a plotless game i think you have to be prepared for your game ending potentially very very quickly i mean on the order of weeks or like a month or something like that like i just because without that plot everybody gets in there they don't know what they're supposed to be doing and they try to take it all in a gajillion different directions and it ends it ends up just kind of falling apart because there there is no direction and uh you know when you're not all rowing the same way right if you're rowing a boat and you're not all rowing the same way you're not going to go anywhere yeah it 
you're not you're not gonna go anywhere and then also some asshole can come in and just then direct it somewhere else right Mm -hmm. because then it's like oh this is a plotless thing it's like okay well then suddenly there were zombies eating everybody's character yeah it's like i didn't come into this what i thought was going to be a simple town rp to to suddenly have zombies right (laughs) but because you gave them no plot then there's not there's no incentive for them to do anything else right yeah and well and you've left you give them no plot then there's also no lore yeah there's no rules there's no there's no idea of to where and when and why and how this exists mm-hmm. it literally is that it could be anything yeah exactly it can be freeing but at the same time it means that there's no cohesion between the other group members yep absolutely um, it's yeah it's like trying to figure out <laughs> what a bunch of people want to eat for dinner without asking anybody right ah! it's just, like, like, some guy's gonna bring tacos another person's gonna bring chinese food like it just is not gonna work out my least favorite conversation in the entire freaking world <laughs> <laughs> so for you guys that don't know um i hate this conversation so much like this is how our house works my husband loves to cook bless him thank god um (laughs) so he is responsible for figuring out what we're eating i do not have this what are we gonna have for dinner conversation drives me absolutely freaking bonkers (laughs) if i have a preference i will tell you you don't have to ask me we don't have to sit and talk about it oh i don't know what do you want to do oh i don't know what do you want to do like it's just it's maddening and maybe i'm just too old you know maybe i'm just too old and i'm too tired but i can't handle it Not wanting to have that decision, I think, is totally fair. Um, and I think that that's, that's great. And, and I think that if some people want to have that conversation when it comes to, like, actual dinner or plotting, I guess they can do that. It's just not my style. Yeah, not me either. I like, I like to know where the boundaries of the rules I can break are. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I, yes. I, I don't mind towing the line. I don't mind breaking things a little bit. I don't mind like sitting there and being like, I'm going to just drop this thing that wasn't in the plot and now it's canon. Um, like Pulse. the fact that Asgard doesn't have these spiders. Like I do shit like that all the time and I love it. It's part of the rules that I like to make. But it just means that I need to know where those boundaries are so that, that those little things can actually be fun for me. Right, so that you don't accidentally step on a landmine that upsets everyone in the role play, yeah. right? <laughs> um, or if I'm going to step on a man- landmine, it's going to be purposeful and it's going to affect the plot. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, which is like what kind of happened with the blood bill of in Atlantis, which was our last RP. Like sitting there and being like, oh, I'm going to just drop this thing that's in my personal plot or personal ideas. And then suddenly it affects the whole RP. And that's something that's really cool about group RP dynamics. But if you have no plot, then suddenly people can choose to listen to that or not. And if you have a mod team that isn't paying attention to stuff like that because they're not paying attention to the overall plot, then that stuff gets ignored and the stories get lost, which Mm -hmm. really is not great. And that's frustrating, right? Because people are coming to the role play and they want to feel like they can put their stamp on it, you know, and that they can have their characters affect things, right? Naomi has a fun, a funny comment. Screw everything you plotted, Landon and Naomi. Uh, friends, let's be friends. <laughs> yeah, um, for those of you guys that, that are not in, in the role play, that aren't in the know there, uh, Landon's character and Naomi's character, they're shipping them. But um, this character's just now decided to break up and friend zone each other. So that's been really fabulous. Uh, really that was not plotted. Fun. That was <laughs> months of plotting, and then be like, ah, "This isn't working." <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, which is a fun. I mean, and that's part of like what keeps RP fresh, fun, and and funky. And if you are so tied to plotting that you don't allow those moments to happen, can be really stifling. Yep. So having yep. moments like that exist is fun. And why one on one you can break your own plot rules Mm -hmm. um but as an rp it's still very important that your all your players know the directionality of the story yep yep for sure and i think um i want to speak also i feel like we've we've got a lot of why i want to speak also on the when just a little bit um i think that when it comes to Mm -hmm. to creating your plot these are are things that are important to establish in the beginning and then kind of as you're going 
uh, regularly check in on that everyone, like out of character wise, is happy with how things are going because things are going to move in a direction you didn't necessarily plan. Uh, that's part of the emergent storytelling of roleplay, right? Like anybody who's ever played a tabletop game or done text-based roleplay or anything, LARPing, right? Anything like that. They know that uh, the things go off the rails very quickly, right? <laughs> uh, when you have lots of people writing a story, that's going to happen. But it's important, <laughs> it's important when your plot does go way off the rails to kind of check in with people, make sure they're still happy, make sure they still feel like they have places for their character to be and things to do. And, um, and that really goes into like, the way that we do that in our role plays is with events, which we are going to have an episode all about events a little bit later. I know we talked about that a little bit last week and we are, you know, I'm mentioning it again this week. But um, we're going to do a whole episode on roleplay events. and Because that's, as a, as a moderator in a group roleplay, like, that's, that's your win, right? Like, that's your check-in to kind of bring things back to a different place to kind of make sure that if certain characters don't seem to be jiving with the main plot that's going on to add in something for them, inspire everybody, etc., etc., stuff like that. Yeah. I, I also think, so yeah, that upkeep I think is a very important part of the plot, but I also think it's very important to not only pay attention to what's happening out of character and where people are feeling that they're at, mm -hmm. but what's happening in character. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good when to, and it can't happen all the time, and it, this is the hard part, but it's important to listen. As a mod, it cannot just affect your characters. True. You need to pick out something that is important to the plot that is happening within the stories developed by characters that were not your characters that can be then applied to the entirety of the RP that doesn't just affect or push forward your storylines is very important. Yep. And a very good when. And it cannot happen all of the time that's kind of like one of those secret weapons i feel as a mod that you could pull out every once in a while um or you can develop subtly around um dropping events that kind of are in line with this idea or sitting there and being like oh there are demons now um, <laughs> <laughs> surprise <laughs> but it needs to be used and executed deliberately and with purpose and it needs to equally affect the entirety of the rp Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think when you're doing when you're doing that plot upkeep, I, I really think it's important to take a look at your game and say, like, you know, who is feeling left out right now? Who does it look like is feeling left out right now? What can we do to make sure that they are good to go and they're happy? Right. And their characters have something to do. Um, yeah. So, for example, in uh, in Freya in Freya's voyage that we're doing right now, we've all of a sudden got this cult plot, which most people are like super excited about, right? Um, but I already know there's some people that are not engaging with it; they're not interested. Okay, so this is like big activity, big action. You know, people are are really jazzed about it. They're doing all kinds of fun stuff with their characters, all kinds of very dramatic things. That means the next event needs to be really dramatic right because we yeah. need another dramatic thing that people that are not interested in the cults can engage with right we can't do something that's a kind of chill whatever um hangout type of event we need something dramatic next because if we don't what's going to happen then is those that don't aren't feeling super engaged with the cult they're going to very slowly not be interested in the role play anymore um unless they are very self-motivated yes and that's hard to be kind of self-motivated within a group dynamic where you're not the mod <laughs> yeah and especially it's a hobby right like it's a hobby no one wants to put that much energy into something that's just supposed to be for fun and hanging out and stuff like that you know it's not supposed to be a job it's not supposed to be a responsibility yeah and i think that um i think that it can feel very isolating too when all of a sudden you are in an rp and the plot has taken a turn that isn't, and I'm talking as like a player, that isn't what you expected, what you wanted, or what your characters are inherently engaged in. Mm -hmm. Either because you haven't talked to the right people, or your character just isn't the type of character to join a cult, or <laughs> X, like as that is an example, X, yeah. X, X, Y, Z. That can be inherently like shocking. Yeah. <laughs> And can be like, I suddenly feel left out in something that's supposed to be a communal game. 
Y'all, poor Landon, this whole cult thing, this whole cult plot hatched over the course of two days. Guess which two days it was? The two days Landon was moving. So she comes back and suddenly there's this like cult war dynamic going on in the role play. Oops. Which, <laughs> and I just need to make a comment. I'm cool with because I have a character who's just itching to join a cult. Uh, and another one who probably would accidentally stumble into a cult sacrifice and not ah! realize doing. <laughs> Oops. Um, <laughs> Oops. So I'm okay with it, but I think that there are certainly players, and that has happened to everybody at any point in time, to suddenly just be like, uh huh? <laughs> this thing I wasn't even aware of was happening within the RP is suddenly controlling the RP. Yep. And so being, being the mods and it being our job to sit there and make it either accessible for the people who are who some, who weren't involved to become involved, mm -hmm. or make something equally as enticing to to interest those people is is like you were saying part of how we have to use it the wens. Yep, use plot to our advantage. Yep, absolutely. Because it's it is something that you do a lot on the front end, but it never stops, right? Like that's that's the main point that I that I want to make with that that win. Even though you always are doing it on the front end, if you stop doing it at some point, then your role play ceases to have an interest for the players that are that are in it. Yeah, and that's I think as a uh, mod team, uh, the most disservice you could do mm -hmm. is when you stop taking care of the players that aren't the main five. Yep, exactly. Um, it's sometimes, and don't get me wrong, there are certainly going to be players within your RP, especially if your RP gets super big, that are going to fall to the side. The yeah, and, and they're are... never going to engage with whatever you do. And that's fine. Like, I'm not talking about fine. that. <laughs> if they're and happy, that's... if they're happy just doing their, their one ship and they don't ever do anything else and they're not complaining, then that is fine with me, you know? Yeah, that's just the reality of something that exists within RP. And that's fine. Like, that's good. That's cool. But if you are so heavily focused on the plot that engages the main five people or the most active five people in your story that doesn't engage the ten mediumly active people mm -hmm. uh, or, or, me or like, you know, midline active that is something that you will then start losing. You will discover that your group will be down to five people. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we talked about this in regards to retention, right? Like yeah. there, you're eighty percent of your activity comes from twenty percent of your people. Period. Hey, Erica, that's Landon. It's me. <laughs> it's Landon. She's back today. So yeah, because of that kind of like eighty twenty rule of you're always going to have. 20% of your people being doing like 80% of your activity, if you only focus on them, all of a sudden, that's all who's going to be in your role play. <laughs> and you don't want that. You do want people that are contributing, you know, on the lesser side, because they're still going to have fun stuff and cool stuff too. And I also think it's important to remember that those statistics never change, no matter the size of your RP. No. <laughs> that even if you suddenly are boiled down to your top five people who are the 20% of the full 100%, all of a sudden, that's going to be split too. Yep. And then you will have 20% of those five people engaging more than the other 80%. And then mm -hmm. suddenly, if you continue to do that habit, it's literally going to be two people. Like yep. it literally <laughs> will you cut your RP of 20 people down to two people real quick if that is the style or what you focus the plot on. Yes. Hey, Brie, welcome, welcome. And if you guys want some more information on that, um, Brie, I'm so glad you're here because we can plug last week's episode. You should definitely go watch last week's episode on um, retention and on advertising because we talk a lot about bringing in new people regularly and why you want to do that and how you want to do that and da 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 da. So if you're hearing this and like, oh, I need to fix that, then go watch last week's episode. The VOD is on my YouTube channel. Thanks yeah. to Karen's stream, I now know that. Y'all crack me up tracking your weeks by my streaming schedule. Y'all are ridiculous. <laughs> That's what fan girls do. That's what true fans do, Karen. I don't need true fans. I just want friends, y'all. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, yeah, I totally, I totally agree with with all of that stuff. And I think, and I think that when it comes, when it comes to like building out these these role plays and these these plots it's 
all like interconnected, right? Like it's all interconnected to what your players are doing, what your players are being attracted to, stuff like that. Like a, a really good example of this that you can pull from tabletop roleplay if you if you do some of that that uh, that you might have heard before is what a really great DM does is when the players like go totally off the plot and they don't do anything that the DM planned, they roll with it and they make it up and they figure it out, right? And that's what you should be doing in your text-based role plays too. You shouldn't be trying to railroad people, but you should always be paying attention to not only the people who are super engaged with whatever the plot is, but also those people that are a little bit less engaged to make sure that they're happy as well. Now, we do, I think, at this point in time, have to recognize that there is sometimes that one asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm totally stealing from you, Erica. Um, that's very, very, very good tabletop advice, and I think it applies to role play, sex-based roleplay, too. Yeah, there is that one asshole who will come into a game and then demand that everyone follow the plots that he is dropping or she is dropping. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Um, It'll, it'll not be great plots. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Well, they won't. maybe they won't be popular plots. Let's set it, put it that yes, way. Yes, they won't be popular plot, plots. And they will get upset about the fact that no one is engaging in their plots. Yeah. Without them engaging in the plot pre-designed. Which is upsetting. Like, that is upsetting Absolutely. to go through that. Like, you know, it's true. But as a mod, you have to, you, I think it's, I think we have to tell people that they exist. Mm -hmm. um, and the reality is that, yes, while it is upsetting, not everyone's going to follow every single plot that someone brings to the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and just because someone wants something to happen doesn't mean it will happen. Mm -hmm. um, especially if they're going around trying to get people to do it in a way that we, that people won't do it. Um, oftentimes we'll sit there and be like, okay, well, let us set you up for success. And then the person will be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's happened before. Um, you know what, Erica, that doesn't, so that sounds like a good problem to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, exactly, Landon. That has definitely happened to us before. Like, we've definitely had, ah, oh, thank you so much for following. Really appreciate that, Mr. Patch. Um, so we have definitely had situations where players are like, I really want the role play to do this. I really want my character to be able to do that. I think this would be super cool, da 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 da. And we're like, okay, sure, we can make that happen. Um, we'll, we'll do this, this, and this for you. You're going to need to play out this, this, and this, you know, whatever. We'll like talk to them and make sure that everything is set up so that they can take those reins and, and make that happen, make that dream plot happen, you know, whatever it is, right? And then sometimes... They just won't pick up that ball. So you've done all that for them and they just, they just, you pass them the ball. You're like, here you go, take it. And they're like, let the ball go just down the court, right? And they just, they don't pick it up. They don't care. Um, and as a mod, that can be really frustrating and disappointing. So I guess the thing that I really want to say about that is don't let that discourage you. Um, a lot of role players, I think, get nervous once it's time to actually have them be, it's time to be on stage, you know, especially if they're used to not having people help them with their plots. Um, and, and that shouldn't be a reason to not do it. You know, you should still be doing that and trying to help your players do what they want to do, even if they don't pick up the ball when you pass it to them. Thanks for the hydrate, Ty. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's part of your job as a mod. Um, but it's also not part of your job to make sure that every single person is getting exactly what they want. Yep. Uh, they got to do work cater, too. Yeah. You can't cater the RP, uh, to individual wants. They have to still work with you and be willing to bend as much as you are bending. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You can set uh, it up for them. Like you can set up the pins absolutely. for them, but you can't throw the bowling ball for them. Right. Absolutely. Like they still have to do that. There have been many a time where we, we had someone come in and be like, I want to be the super villain of the RP. And we'll be like, cool, write a super villain. And then they won't write a super villain. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's and hard. It's, like, it's hard the first time that you try something. And oftentimes these people are coming to us because it's the first time, you know. Absolutely. And I'm not, and I'm not trying to bash that or them. Like, if you want to try it, hell yeah. But, you know, we can't write necessarily an RP where Mother Teresa is the villain. <laughs> <laughs> and if you give us Mother Teresa being like, this is the person that's going to be the villain, it's kind of like, okay, but that's 
people aren't going to see them as a villain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can't control what people see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yes. That's, that's my big thing with that. Yeah. No, I totally think that that's true. Um, for all of the work that we do, it still relies on the players, right? So Absolutely. when you're setting up these plot things as a mod, what you're really doing is making sure that all the inspiration is there, right? And you're making sure that your players don't feel stifled. You're making sure they don't feel like, oh, if I do this thing, um, I'm going to be stepping on toes or people are not going to be interested. Da, da, da. Like you're setting it up so they feel comfortable and confident, essentially. That's what yes. you're really doing when you're when you're putting these plot things out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do we want to talk about briefly? We've mentioned a couple of things, but, do, but how? How do we get plot involved? Okay, so this is um, this is what I do when it's the first, and I've mentioned this before. So when I'm first creating a role play group, very first in the beginning, right? What I do to decide what the plot should be is I look at. Oh, hey! Uh, thank you for the hydrate, Brie. I'll do that in just a second. Um, what I look for is what's bothering me in the world, which I know is like a kind of um, an interesting way to do it. That's not what everyone's doing, but I'm looking at what's bothering me in the world and that becomes the plot. So I'll give an example. When we did Magic Reborn, uh, what was bothering me in the in the world was, um, was that uh, the, there was a lot of rhetoric going around about like build the wall, right? So you know like when that was happening, I'm sure everybody remembers. And I found that really distressing. And I was like, how can I have a plot that is about a wall? Because that's bothering me right now. And I want people to, uh, to engage with that in some way. And Magic Reborn became basically a town RP that was an actual town protected by a wall. And the horrors that ensued from having a town that does that. Uh, so that's, that's kind of how I start with like big overall plots. Um, I hope that makes sense and everybody's kind of following along with what I'm what I'm saying. But that's not the only way to do it, Landon. Like I know you do something quite different. Oh, uh, I just asked myself how can I make this character as miserable as possible? <laughs> <laughs> and then Tragedy. I Tragedy. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, but how could I beat that? <laughs> no, I um and I think that this is the different thing of of looking at character plot and overall story plot. Yeah. I look at where do I want my character to be and how can I get them there? Mm -hmm. Who are they when they're going to start and how can I get them to where I want to be? Yeah. And then I do things and plan things that are along that that support that trajectory. Mm -hmm. um, while also keeping that trajectory in a reasonable timeline. Yep. Um, <laughs> which I think is the hard <laughs> that's part. The, that's the hard part for poor Landon, right? <laughs> I just need to add more in between there, and I'm just like, but we could also do this, and I'm like, but in three months, she's got to be at this point, and she's not anywhere near there yet. So <laughs> um, <laughs> timelines can are meant to be broken. <laughs> Definitely for, in roleplay, they are. <laughs> for a long, and but like as as far as like a story arc or story plot goes. I sit there and I go, what do I find? I, it's very similar to you. What do I find interesting? Mm. What in the world do I want to explore? And how can I explore it? Mm -hmm. So sitting there and like the wall is, that's a great example. Um, sitting there and being like, okay, if building a planet, sitting there and, and asking myself, what dynamics are fascinating to me that I think would be really interesting in a futuristic society? oh, we have a level of classism here. Why don't we just bounce up the classism um, <laughs> and make a whole... I mean, that makes sense that there would be a whole planet based off of that. Yep. And so setting up these things that I find interesting and want to continue to explore. That's the selfish part of plotting. Mm -hmm. um, I think then from there, how we go about it is we ask ourselves important questions, which mm -hmm. I think we're going to talk about in a little while about um and we can actually start talking about it now but but more importantly about um how can i engage other people with this plot that interests me yes so let's do that because i think that is like the most important thing when it comes to creating a plot in regards oh, to yeah. role play and we talked about this a little bit last week but let's go into some actual detail on on how you make this it's like what is your hook yeah. right it's what it what is it that is going to make someone else 
pick, look at that plot and go, I want to engage with that. I want my character to be a part of that, right? Like, I want to write that too. That sounds really fun. It's the same thing as when you're shopping for books in like a bookseller, right? You know, back in the day when we used to go to the bookstore. <laughs> and you pick up a book and you turn it around and you read the synopsis and go, huh, ah, oh, that looks good. I think I will buy this book, right? Like, that's what you want to do. You want to have a hook that lets people go, okay, this is where my character could fit in and I am interested. Yeah, I also think that um, some, some level of mystery helps mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people don't want to write a pre-written story. There are mm -hmm. some people that do, some people that really enjoy a pre-written outline as far as this happens, this happens, this happens, and then this happens. Yeah, so, so you mean like a, a something where the, the plot synopsis gives you the ending, right? Versus yeah, when it absolutely. doesn't give you the ending gives you the ending or has everything is fact or something like that for for i think for group rps attracting people into it and people wanting to write allows for a little bit of freedom for those writers to then make their characters matter to the plot mm -hmm. um, and also get to determine part of the plot Mm -hmm. uh, still get a little aspect of control because we as writers, even our peers, we love our control. We're literally <laughs> controlling the lives of characters. Like anyone who sits there and feels like, I'm not a control freak, but IRP is a liar. It's, um, I mean, it's kind of true, right? <laughs> like you might not be as much as other role players, but you obviously like a little bit of it if you're interested in kind of puppeteering characters in, in a role play sense. You know. And as one of the biggest control freaks you will ever meet, I totally understand. It's okay to want <laughs> like micro control things, um, but being able to, as a mod and setting up an RP, give attract other people with that to sit there and be like, "Oh yeah, you get a say in what happens. Mm -hmm. You get to figure this out with us." There's a little bit of mystery. For example, Yin said. Yin said was an RP that we had. That was very much a town Disney RP com combination. Think Once Upon a Time, where suddenly this mystery happened, where um, we could do magic inside this circle, or yep. magic existed, um, and suddenly like we couldn't leave the town, but there was magic. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we didn't give why, we didn't give how, we didn't give any of these things. We just said there's magic, mm -hmm. and then we let other people control what that looked like and how it portrayed itself. Yep, yep, we let them decide, right? Like we essentially let the players kind of decide, right? And I think that that's so, that's so true to real life. So something that I definitely want to point out is that in real life, we go about our lives all the time not knowing how stuff works. But for whatever reason, when it comes to uh, role play and it comes to stories, People want like everything spelled out for them and to know exactly how it works, but we don't have that anywhere else in our lives. You know what I mean? Like how many of us use computers and don't really fully know how computers work? You know, like, I mean, you get along just fine, not knowing tons of stuff about how the world functions. And that's okay, not a problem. I know everything about everything. You know what, Landon? Let me just mute. Let me just mute Landon right now. Okay. Bye. <laughs> All right, I put myself on you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, you don't, I mean, you don't know. You don't know how a lot of stuff works that you you deal with just fine in your everyday life. The way Landon just said Yen Sid blew my mind. I don't think you're pronouncing things wrong, Brie. We might be pronouncing things wrong. Who knows? Summer, hey, so glad to have you here. <laughs> you're not wrong, Summer. Also, um, I... I am the queen at pronouncing things incredibly incorrectly. <laughs> I pronounced Ravish, uh I can't even pronounce it correctly. Now, I wrote Raviston Lestrange for the longest time. Turns out it's not pronounced Raviston. Rabastian. Rabastian. Yeah. You <laughs> put the I emphasis for... on totally the wrong syllable. <laughs> <laughs> and I, for we're going on eight years, pronounce it wrong. So I, I am not the pinnacle of pronouncing things. <laughs> I just want to say that. Yeah, and never listen to how I pronounce things either, because like most of the time, like the, so a lot of these words that we say on stream or that that I say in videos, it's the first time I've ever said that word out loud, and usually I'm just writing it. So you know. <laughs> oh hey, welcome KGB. 
Oh, we've got a long comment here. People are afraid to step on the creator's toes, I would think, so they're worried about writing out something and having a backlash, especially if it's important to the overall setting story, so they want stuff spelled out. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that is absolutely where that is coming from. Um, and I think that as mods, you can create a much better situation if you truly convince people that it's not a problem and to not care. This is Z. Oh my God, Z, you made it live. I can't believe it. I had no idea that was you. <laughs> awesome. I, um, and I also want to, I want to comment on that too, because I think it's incredibly important to, to us, at least with how we do our RPs, we do it very differently than a lot of people that it is really yours to control. Mm -hmm. There is no wrong in our no. world. And if no. you are doing something quote unquote wrong, and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna have an experience here. We had a we had a person who was writing a character who talked back to a very powerful character. Yeah, in a previous uh, role play. And saying and saying things that like they wouldn't like you wouldn't say to someone <laughs> who was your boss and could kill you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it got to a point where we were like, um your character's gonna die if you keep talking. <laughs> yeah, and we had to message them, and it's like, do you realize that if my character doesn't kill yours, that it's very out of character, and it's gonna be very strange? Like, are you sure you want to act like that? And then they and realize, like, oh, shoot, no, that's silly. I mean, oh, Brie, um, the baby's there. She's on the, she's on the, uh, in the other camera. That's Queen, right there on the bed. But you can I use your points if you want light, to. It's a little hard to see. Yeah, unfortunately, that this that's being done with the crappy camera, so I can't adjust it. I wish someday I'll get two decent cameras instead of just one decent one. One day, it's on the list of things. Yeah, someday um, eventually. And and in the reality, we didn't sit there and go, "Oh, you can't do that," or yeah. this is against the rules, or whatever. No. We were just like, "Are you sure?" Because there there are, and I think that that's what we push. And that is important to our plot aspect, too, is that we push that there are consequences to actions in this RP. Yep. In so it was RP more about, it's like, are you sure? This is what's going to happen if you do that. Are you sure this is what you want to do? <laughs> Take risks. We love taking risks. We love when people, like, just out of nowhere invent cults. It's oh, wonderful. yeah. <laughs> I also recognize that the culture that we build in our RPs are not how every single other RP people build their cultures mm -mm. and nope. that we actually might not be as open as we think we are. I'm also going to recognize that, that there might be some people who feel that we have pushed down or pushed back too hard. That sit there and go, yeah, Landon and Karen are not as... as <laughs> I mean, maybe. As I, and I'm going to sit there and just say that that probably exists on some level. I'm sure it does. I'm sure there's people but, that have joined our role plays and been like, this isn't as free as, as we wanted it because like they were trying to do things that we personally did not think would work out you know or something yeah. like that like but that's totally to a thing be better we strive to have conversations and we strive to let our our people make decisions and as mods giving advice to other people who want to start role play or run their own role play that is the biggest thing that i can give you is let your players have that control and let them have the freedom that they deserve because that's what's going to make them better writers yep for sure um there was like this going going back to tabletop for a second there's like a comic or maybe it was a tweet. I don't remember. I've seen it floating around tabletop circles. Um, no, it is a comic. And it's like, if you if you let somebody kind of do whatever they want, they will get serious and dramatic at the end. But if you kind of force them to be very serious and very realistic, what ends up happening is they lose interest, right? In the comic, um, if anybody like follows a lot of tabletop uh, Twitters, you've probably seen it. But in the comic, it's like this character, this player makes this character that's like, I'm a clown and I throw pies, right? And the DM's like, are you sure that's what you want? And the player's like, yes, this is what I want to do. And the DM's like, okay. And then by the end, it's like, there's this dramatic scene of the clown character being like, no, I'm going to sacrifice myself for you. I love you. And the other character's like, no, slappy. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but that's what happens if you let people do whatever they want. They'll like turn out with some amazing stuff. Yeah. And, and I think that for building a plot, when it comes to building a group RP, what is important is building a plot, is building a platform where writers and, and members have the opportunity to create the stories that they want within the world that they want. Yep. Plot on the RP basis for me is the same thing as lore, or is, is very similar to lore, because it's like literally you're just setting this thing out there, and here are the rules or the situation in which we're playing by, go have fun. Yep, pretty much. Exactly. 
Yeah. And that's really the type of people that we want to attract, right? That are going to be interested in that. So if you're like hearing this and going, well, like, well, that's not what I want. I want this, this, and this, you know, I want players that are going to do this, this, and this and act like this, this, and this. Okay. Well, that's fine. But you need to kind of reverse engineer that to figure out exactly how your plot should be set up and exactly when you should be making your plot drops and, and how you should be doing that and stuff like that. So, so you should always be thinking about like, is what I'm creating for this plot and for my events and for these sorts of things, like, is this conducive to the type of player that I'm looking for? Because um, if it's not, then you're going to end up with a role play that is not what you want, right? And then you're, you're unhappy. And if the person running the role play is unhappy, what do you think is going to happen, right? The role play falls apart, of course. Um, yeah. And I think that also that takes us into our next step of things to consider when writing a plot. Mm -hmm. And that is, who do you want in your RP? Mm -hmm. How do you want your RP to look? And who do you want to join? Because the reality is, is that how you write your plot and that little blurb that you're giving everybody in your advertisements, on your, on your server, is what is going to be attracting people. Mm -hmm. And so how do you attract the people that you want to? Yep. If you want to have a story that you have written and you just want people to play in that world, that is totally valid. Um, but that is how you are going to write your plot then. Yep. And when then you're you probably... I'm like... oh, sorry, go ahead. I didn't realize you weren't done. Oh, yeah. You're going to I just like to ramble. <laughs> you're going to go, this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens. Mm -hmm. Which is totally fine. But yep. that's how you're going to write it. Yeah, so exactly. Gonna... So then, then what you're gonna what you're gonna be looking for then is players that that want to be have their hand held, right? That want to be railroaded, right? Now that means that you have to be willing to do that work of holding their hand and railroading them, right? But if that's what you want, then write your plot like that so that you attract that type of player. Yeah, and there are those players exist. There are oh, players yeah. like we were talking about that like to be told what to do. There yeah. are players that like to have that not be clarified. There are players who want to actually go in and kind of maybe shake things up and break those rules or ex or explore in the world that has been created. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -mm. But you need to advertise that and, and like accept that those are the kinds of players that you want and need. You don't want, if you're going to spell everything out in your plot exactly how you want it, don't expect somebody to come in and sit there and be like, but let's shake things up. <laughs> yeah, because you're probably not going to attract that person in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. And if you're looking for someone who's going to be a collaborate collaborator, when you are not, when you are in your plot making it clear that there is no one collaborating with you, <laughs> uh, then you're not going to get a collaborator. Yeah. <laughs> like, like expect what you put out. I guess is the is the ba basic of what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. I mean, humans we're we're very we're very empathetic uh, creatures, right? And I think that people pick up whatever you put down. So you just got to put down what it is that you're wanting to pick up. And there is no right or wrong answer on, on what it is you're putting up or want to pick up or what you're searching for. Just know that also if you are limiting what it is you want in your RP, you are then limiting, you're limiting the amount of people that are going to be interested in your RP. Yeah. So if you want something super specific, don't expect a lot of people. Yep. If you're willing to be more open and literally just do sometimes what we do, which is here's a sci-fi RP, we're escaping the plague, have fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also there's magic, have fun. Well, of um, course there's magic. I mean, we made it, so there's magic. <laughs> it's a sci-fi fantasy RP, we're escaping a plague, have fun, then, then there's going to be a lot more people who are going to come in. Which means yeah. that there's also going to be a lot le more people that might not fit our RP who come in. Yep. Which is not a bad thing either. Yeah, that happens um, too. But it, it is something then if we were super specific and then like, if we went right off the bat, we're like, here is a fantasy sci-fi RP with magic that we're escaping the plague and we want cultists and this is what's going to happen and this is what's going to happen and they're eventually going to die in a black hole. Mm -hmm. The amount of people that are going to apply to that RP is going to be far less than the, than the people before. Yeah, but there are people that are looking for that, right? Like, um, you know, Eric is saying uh, that uh, sometimes specific is a good thing, right? And sometimes it is. Um, there are people that aren't looking for sandboxes that are looking for theme parks. You know what I mean? So if that's what you if that's what you want to run, then set it up that way so that you attract people that are looking for theme parks instead of sandboxes. You know? Absolutely. And that and like I said, that that is that there is no wrong way. It just I don't think we would have had as many people 
apply if that is how we had spelled it out and that's no. okay i do think that role players tend to lean more towards wanting sandboxes than uh than uh, theme parks but i don't know i might be biased <laughs> about that. I, I have not i have not surveyed all role players i don't really know <laughs> you know uh let's see what does erica say i really want to run a kushio's legacy rp one day but that's so specific and i'm not sure i want the responsibility of it yeah i mean that's a good point um erica when you when you are getting more specific it's more res you have more responsibility as a mod you know you have to do more of the work if you want it to be like that so um yeah it's a choice definitely that you have to consider yeah and i also think it's there's like this <laughs> i think that there's this weird paradox in modding that um where it actually turns out the less people that you have, the more work that you have. Yeah, the sometimes. Have, <laughs> the less work that you have, don't get me wrong, the more people we have, the way more reading there is. But um, <laughs> there is times where it's like, oh, there's only five of us, gotta figure out how to make this interesting. Yeah, um, sometimes, it's, sometimes there is, right? Like, I think there's a happy medium for us, but there's definitely been absolutely. times where it's we had more work to do because there was less people. And it was like, oh, we have to figure out more because we have to inspire these people more and da-da-da-da-da, like you get the idea. <clears throat> yes. Hold on, making a funny comment. It's not even that funny in the chat. Oh. I, can't, I can't type and talk. At the same time there. Oops. Um. <laughs> I can't really either. It's no, it's no problem. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, I think that the things that when we're talking about how and the when and the why and the who, mm -hmm. that's, that's what we talk about with why. Mm -hmm. Is all mm -hmm. of those things is, is um, how you're going to do it, why you write it, what you're looking for, all of that. Yeah, 100%. I think so. If we want to get hyper specific as far as how to get people interested again. Yeah. Um, I think one of the very important questions we need to ask ourselves when looking at a plot is, is there room, room for growth of character in a variety of ways? Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we're looking for a specific trope or plot that we want to plan plan out, we as writers can hyper focus on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think creative uh, creatives do tend to get a little bit hyper focused sometimes. And then all of a sudden, you've written a plot that is really just an asking for a certain trope to be played out, mm -hmm. rather than an entire world. <laughs> uh, so maybe that's, that's more cool. suited for one on ones if you found yourself doing that, right? <laughs> and and or, but not even that. If you want it to be a group, okay, uh, a group RP, there's a way to open it up. But it's actually what is important is recognizing that skill and that ability to sit there and be like, oh, this isn't a whole world. This is a plot. <laughs> <laughs> Or five people even. Yep. But what I what I really want to do is, is sit there and if I want to make this accessible to the wider public, how can I do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really important. Um, because when you're making when you're making that that plot that's supposed to go out to the group, you have to make sure that um, there's room. Right, that there's room for everybody to do different things because definitely something that happens when it comes to role play is that once someone is doing a certain thing, no one else is going to want to do it, right? Because nobody, everybody wants to be special, nobody wants to duplicate, right? And that's that's normal, and like we encourage that too. I don't want people to kind of do the same thing over and over either. So, but role players will often do that naturally, regardless of whether you enforce that or not. So what that means is that you have to make sure there is lots of options for people because if there's not, then what's going to happen is that people are going to join and then they're not going to know what to do because the three ideas they had are already taken, right? So you have to make sure there is tons of room for lots and lots of different ideas. Yep. Um, and, lots of, and lots of ways to grow, too. Mm -hmm. um, I find it personally that sitting there and saying we're all going to die in the end is not a good way to get a lot of people interested in a plot. Yes. Um, because Even if it's true. <laughs> but like I just said, I was like saying like, you know, this whole thing like we're all going to die in a black hole, which is a joke that I have for one of my characters, which is why I said it. <laughs> but sitting there and advertising that, it means that those characters that other people create aren't going to be able to expand outside of the RP mm -hmm. because the RP is going to end when everybody dies. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. And that can be very stifling. Yeah. Bree says, I love death endings. I love death endings too. But what I have found is that when you put that out there from, from go, instead of like kind of building up to it a little bit, a lot of people get very nervous and they don't want to engage because they get, they get a little bit too in their head about it and get scared. Um, You know, role players can be very conflict diverse. Uh, I know that we are, we are here for the conflict in, in the plot wise, right? But it can be hard sometimes, I think, for, for role players to really wrap their heads around it and actually execute on those desires. At least that's what I found. Yeah, I also think that um, there is... We like the control of when and how and the impact of killing characters. Yeah. People don't, I, at least in my experience, don't just enjoy killing characters. <laughs> they what? enjoy killing characters for the emotional impact that that brings other people and themselves. Mm-hmm. But I think also mostly other people. Yeah. Uh, and maybe I'm just dragging myself here. <laughs> but... <laughs> If you don't allow the writer to give the choice of when, where, and why it happens, it loses that emotional impact. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Maybe not all the way, but it does lose it a little bit because everyone's dead. So everyone's sad that everyone's dead. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not quite the same. So big deaths Mm -hmm. are awesome. However, I think right off the bat is a really tough sell. Yeah. Um, especially in a group setting. One-on-one, completely different rules. If you're going to go in on this and say that, hey, everyone is going to die, or hey, this is going to end in mur- murder-suicide, cool. Um, but that that means that it's like one-on-one. It's not sitting there and being like, every single person is going to die. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so Zine has a good comment. Um discourage that what they're doing doesn't actually matter. And yes, I think that's a short version of exactly what we're saying. When you lead with that, people tend to get very like, um, oh, well then all of this stuff that I'm planning and all of this stuff that I'm doing is irrelevant because we know exactly what's gonna happen in the end already. There's nothing for me to discover. There's nothing for me to pull people along and have them enjoy. You know, it's like, there's none of that, you know? So yeah, I think when when you lead with that, that's what happens. That actually leads us into this great next topic because there. My other question is: is when you're thinking about a plot, is there a ceiling you will eventually hit? Mm-hmm. You have to keep in mind that eventually there is going to there might be a point in time where you cannot RP any further. <laughs> Potentially, like that could happen. And and not even like saying that that'll happen with every single plot, but it's something that you have to sit there and be like, okay, where is the stopping point on this? Is there a ceiling that I am going to hit? because of x y and z because Mm -hmm. of this plot the way that i've designed this plot this plot is going to end even if it's not in big death but it might end because we make it to a planet all of a sudden it's not a journey rp anymore it is a colonization rp which is two very different rps like sitting there and and making those things and recognizing those those ceilings are very important yep because at least what I found is whenever you try to have like a big plot change within a single single role play, um, it's not what people signed up for, and a lot of people tend to to leave or check out, right? Um, whereas we have a lot of success, and we've talked about this before, we have a lot of success with instead of doing like a plot change inside the RP, destroying the whole RP, like closing it and opening a brand new one. People tend to love that, and they'll they'll come and join the new role play. Um, but they tend to not really be super into like this the existing role play suddenly changing gears, right? Yeah. And that's why, like, especially with Freya's voyage, and then I know um Erica or Lilith, I think it's Lilith. Yes, Just but a- I think they want I think she wants us to say Erica on stream. Oh sorry. That's Erica. Okay. Um Erica said in the chat that uh, they appreciate that it'll be a few generations until they hit the planet. Uh, the thing is, is that we wrote it that way because we didn't want to have that suddenly change. Yeah, exactly. Like, if it's going to be a few generations, then we're never going to get there. (laughs) Now, hypothetically, we might get inspired to sit there and be like, let's end this RP in a year or two, and then write what happens three generations later when they get there. We could have that opportunity, but it's not going to be the same RP. 
No. Um, and it's and in that case, it's also not going to be the continuation of a story. It's simply going to be the continuation of this like idea. Yeah, it would be like a sequel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it's. I think that that separation is very important for us. That we sat there and was like, we're going to hit a ceiling, and our ceiling is is that we can't write out three generations. Because we write in real time. <laughs> we do. I mean, we, we the way that our time works, it's not possible for us, personally. Um, now, not everybody does yeah. it that way, right? Like, some people condense time in a crazy amount, and, like, and it's fine, and they can do that, right? Um, we don't personally. Yeah. So. Ty, is that a shock because it's long, or is it a shock because it's not long enough? <laughs> I don't know. I tend to get shocked when I see people that are like, oh, we've been doing this role play for like a decade and, and it's finally yeah. dying. And what do I do? And I'm like, you've been doing it for a decade. Are you kidding? That's so long. <laughs> I have never. I have oh. never. Yeah, our, our RPs, we tend to we tend to have plot ideas for anywhere between. I mean, obviously it changes out, but we plan for a year. Usually about um, a year is about how long we last. Hopefully it will get to two. And it has gotten to two. It's gotten to three. Um, but we plan for about a year. Yeah, because that's our typical That's our typical length. Um, at past a year, we tend to get bored and yes. want to do something else. <laughs> um, which is, yeah, that's how it is. And I also think that like it's also easier to do long running plots when there are less people. Yes. We're talking about a group of, we're at 16 members. We might be actually bigger. We might be at 20 members right now. Yeah. Um, well, we just started this new this new yes. role play. So that tends to be when we're it at our largest. Really yeah. But that is very different from being able to run that for 10 years to someone, like to a trio. Or a yeah. Group um, I think that there is a difference. And so like, we can't really compare apple and oranges. Yeah. Like if it was just an RP that was um, me, you and Naomi. Right, like, um, yeah. or something like that, or like me, me, you, and Shadow, I mean, we've been, or we've been, that. we've been doing that for like you know, eight years. <laughs> yeah, we have because you know because me, you, and me, you, and Shadow in particular um, have been role playing together for that long. We just don't do the same game, you know. Same characters, different game. Yep, exactly. We just re-roll, <laughs> re-roll every time. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think that being aware of the ceilings that your plot naturally will hit and also trying to circumvent any ceilings that you don't want them to hit. Yeah. Um, such as, like, are they going to run into a planet that they'll colonize? Mm -hmm. um, things like that. Yep. I think are, is an important part of building your plot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and so far, I mean, I'm not, I'm not ruling it out necessarily, but so far I've not found a way to like basically do a a whole nother plot within the same RP and have people still be interested. So if y'all know how to do that um, with a group that's like 10 plus people, let me know. I'd be really curious how you made it work because I have never figured it out. <laughs> I think it's really hard because I think what really rejuvenates people is character creation. I think it does. Um, I think it does. Yeah. You, are, it, you can change the plot as many times as you want. It's still the same characters and people get bored with the characters. They don't I, get bored. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's true. I think there's a lot of truth to that, at least for us. Um, you know, that's how how it's gone in our groups, for sure. Yeah. So, and then that's just, and that might just be us, right? Like, yeah. that could just be how the mods feel, and we're ignoring the rest of the RP for that, but Maybe. that's, that's <laughs> the wonderful power of being a mod. Sometimes. Well, and, you know, people are very monkey-see-monkey-do, <laughs> right? Like, if the mods feel a certain way, then everyone's gonna copy that. Oh, yeah. And that's just how, that's just how it is when you run a roleplay, and anybody that's, that's run any sort of game before knows that that's the, that's the case. Which is terrifying, because the <laughs> world in which I am the role model is, should not exist. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> too too bad it exists <laughs> i'm the bad example guys that's you don't want to follow landon's example <laughs> anyway <laughs> oh my gosh you're crazy <laughs> I, the craziest <laughs> anyway um i also think when building your plot and i know that you wanted to talk about this specifically karen yes don't over criticize yourself when yes building. you yeah, I, you are your biggest critic, okay? When you are looking at everything that you've laid out and set up and thinking about, like, is this really good? You know, do I actually like this? Da, 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 da. Like, you are your biggest critic. 
no one else is going to look at your role play and think it's bad in the ways that you think it's bad. Okay. They're not because they're looking at it with fresh eyes. It's not the same thing as when you look at it. Like here's, I'll do another, another, another quote that I've seen before. Um, when somebody asks an artist, well, what do you do with your art after you've made it? Well, I stare at it until I hate it. <laughs> and that is me, right? Like that is so me. Now, I do go back and rewatch streams. I do go back and rewatch videos, right? But that's so that I can improve for later. Um, but, uh, but yeah, every single time I do, I find what I don't like about them. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I think that that's true for, for a lot of creative people, that if you spend a lot of time staring at it, then you're going to see all the problems with it. And so I just want to say that no one else is going to see the problems in the way that you see them. They're going to see it and be like, this is the coolest thing ever. I freaking love it. It's amazing. Which is always what happens to me when I show the team the new work and I'm blown away every time because I'm like, this is okay. And they're like, no, it's amazing. <laughs> but I've stared at it 20 times at that point. You, you know? have to pay us to hype you up, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay you anything. <laughs> what an awful Can't job. You love and affection. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I do pay you with lots of love. And then <laughs> good, good plots. <laughs> <laughs> we try, right? We try. But yeah, um, nobody's nobody's gonna nobody's gonna be as harsh of a critic as you are if you're the one writing these plots, if you're the one writing out events, things like that. It's, they're just not. I'm gonna put my therapist hat back on and go back to the control issues. Okay. Um <laughs> We as writers especially if you are creating a world and a plot and an idea want everything to be perfect that's why we have tolkien's in our world that's why we have people who world build so much that they have books and books and books on literal lore and on history and on things that aren't relevant to the actual plot of things <laughs> It, it exists. It happens. The amount of notes that I have for a novel that hasn't even been half written yet is insane. <laughs> um, the amount of notes that we had that we cut from from Freya's voyage or that we thought of from Freya's voyage that didn't make it into the incredibly, extremely long lore that we already <laughs> have is kind of crazy. Um, it's and that's also why we have like headcam and stuff is so we can eventually get all those ideas out if we find them necessary to the plot, but don't find them necessary for you to apply an app. Mm -hmm. Um, I, we do this, and the reality is is that readers and people who engage with the plot and RP don't care. <laughs> no, they don't really. <laughs> Like, they care about their own ideas, right? <laughs> I mean, everyone knows, everyone knows, and a huge amount of readers have read Lord of the Rings. How many people have truly read the Silmarillion? Not many. Right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe Shadow. She probably read it, right? <laughs> and probably some, like, real good, you know, Tolkien fan, fanboys and fangirls have definitely read it. But, like, the reality is that there's a reason why there isn't a movie on that. Because you bet your ass that Hollywood would try to make money off of it if it was interesting. Yeah, for um, sure. And if anybody cared. <laughs> Erica, why does this not surprise me about you? That seems so on brand for you. <laughs> I'm fine. I understand that, Erica, and that's great. But, like, and it's fine. It's great. And it's amazing world building and plot, you know, adding and, and character background. But, like, it is not necessary to the actual Lord of the Rings. Yeah, like, when I say care, what I mean is, like, your average player. I don't mean, like, you know, yeah. the, the super invested world-building person, you know? And you can build a role-play for that person if you want to. Just know that there are less of them in the world, right? They are the Absolutely. minority. <laughs> They're in the minority, and also, if you find them, they will also sit there and try to improve your world. They won't sit there and criticize Some people will criticize it, but a lot of people will sit there and be like uh, actually can we change this thing and do this but that's another topic that we're going to talk about in a second yeah <laughs> um, and Tolkien's it. prose is not the greatest true true okay I will die on this hill oh I'm sorry my. I know there are some Tolkien fan fanboys oh in the world but Tolkien is actually a bad writer I yeah. said it it's true don't at me okay I will not take comments 
<laughs> the thing about Tolkien is Tolkien gets off on making people feel stupid. I and think he does a little bit. I think he did. Yeah. He does a, little, he does yeah, a lot. And uh, that's what makes him a really bad writer because his... Uh, work is not actually accessible to the to most readers. No, well, uh, Erica's saying it right. Like he's a linguist and a historian, right? He's not a writer, which, which is, is true. That's what he's well, trained in. He's a trained the, linguist and historian. But that means that the average person trying to pick up Lord of the Rings is going to cry themselves and <laughs> believe that they are stupid because they can't read Lord of the Rings. And the reality is, is that Tolkien didn't make Lord of the Rings readable. Yeah. If you want to, re if you want to read Tolkien at his most readability read the hobbit yeah and it's literally he he advertised this book as a kid's book and it's not a kid's book it's the average american reader book but it's uh, anyway this is i think so awesome. too because <laughs> <laughs> i love the hobbit i love the prose in the hobbit so much more than like literally anything else he's ever written <laughs> and the hobbit's great anyway getting off the soapbox getting back <laughs> onto the point oh hey rose um, i'm so glad to see you here today <laughs> Uh, Denley found my linguistics textbooks interesting. Yeah, I mean, if you're a linguist, like, you're not gonna have a problem with Tolkien, right? Because that's yeah. what he is. <laughs> yeah, and that, I mean, it's, it's fantastic, but that's just, he's not a, he's not a fiction writer. He's no. Like a historian. Yes. Um, <laughs> but as far as, as far as building your plot goes, no one's gonna sit there and sit there and be like, oh, there's a hole in this plot. Oh, mm -hmm. this doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And if they do... <laughs> They will not sit there and be like, oh my god, you're so stupid. The reason I'm not writing in this RP is because there's a plot hole. Yeah, it's no, 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 it's not like that. Like, <laughs> they're going to literally be like, can we fill it with cement? Like, I have some cement ideas here. Can we put a, Can we put some of these ideas in there like cement? Yes. And if then as a mod, it is going to be your job to sit there and go, yes, please fill it. Or, no, I like that hole there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we matter if the hole is there because the road is over there. Go back to the road. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped my phone. Hang on. I, okay, there we go. I know I'm being so hysterical that <laughs> like, literally dropped her phone out of her hand. I mean, it's true. That's what happened. Oh, bye, queen. Sorry, no more baby guys. She hopped down. Okay. Um, yes, 100%. Because we have had people come in and be critics, right? And the first yeah. time this happens to you, it can be kind of jarring, right? Yeah. It can be kind of jarring to be like, oh my god, someone actually is is, is picking my plot apart just as much as I picked it apart. I don't know how to handle this, you know? Um, but we have never had somebody that was both a good fit for our role play and actually like negative about the plot. It's been exactly like what Landon decides, or Landon um, describes. They'll see a, a hole, a pothole in the road, and they'll be like, let me put some cement in there. And we're like, that's a side road. No one cares about that but you. Here's the main road. Or we might be like, that's a wonderful idea. Please put it in head cannons. I love it. You know? Um, I'm so sorry that that's true. Chose to live on. I don't care if it's Phil or not. Get back to the main road. That's what I feel like sometimes we say. That happens. I mean, that has happened, right? Because sometimes people want to fill holes just because they see the hole, not because it actually matters, right? So we yeah. can be like, does that have anything to do with your characters, right? And they'll be like, well, no, but someone might want to know and it's like are you that someone okay well then leave it alone <laughs> the number one example just to give examples on this is money systems yeah there are sometimes people in rp in our rps who come in and be like but an american money system doesn't make any sense and we'll be like we don't care <laughs> <laughs> get back on the road <laughs> yep because essentially like what i what i've learned with with money systems oh hey lunar so happy you're here today um what i've learned with money systems is that vast majority of people will not engage with them so every single role play i run money systems are either one-to-one -one with the u.s dollar or they're one-to-one -one with the european union dollar either way is fine because everyone basically understands that right even if they're from another country they basically understand the way that money works in the u.s and in the eu right so you just match yeah. it to that and then you don't have to bother anyone because you know what as soon as you the euro yes thank you erica um as soon as you actually give it a real money system you know what's going to happen those like two people that care are now going to have to go correct everyone that does it wrong you yeah. know and it's exhausting it is exhausting and that's so. part of the and that's part of the your players don't care <laughs> um aspect is because we have enough going on in our heads that if we're coming to this hobby to escape and have fun, 
we care there's only like so much fucks we have to give <laughs> the more that has been created for this world mm -hmm. and i guarantee you on most people's lists what the money system is does not rank in that fucks enough fucks to give no they don't care um, <laughs> it has nothing to do with their plot that, so they don't care you know yeah, the people remember it to then write it into their responses on the per chance that they might actually directly use it yeah like um and and like again no shame to people who do want to hyper focus on that and have that hyper reality but the react for us and for me i just sit there and i go it's not the main point get back on the road <laughs> <laughs> yep for sure we have definitely experienced all of that <clears throat> um so yeah that's the the whole don't hyper criticize yourself because at the end of the day this is supposed to be fun even for you the person creating it yeah um and it does not have to be a perfect world for people to enjoy writing into it Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you have to learn how to accept help if you want it to be more perfect. Yep. Um, Erica has a good good comment for anybody that is like, but I really want that. I really want to have a system like that. How do I make it work? Um, well, exactly what you're saying, Erica, is how I've seen it, seen people make it work, is they'll use a tabletop system as the backdrop. They'll say, okay, fine, we're matching Dungeons and Dragons, or we're matching um, Call of Cthulhu, or we're matching, you know, whatever. Pick your favorite uh, tabletop system. They'll just say, okay, fine, we're using this. Plonk. You know, and um, and that way people can easily Google it, and and it's not like this this thing that uh, that's like very esoteric and unique to your role play. So again, yeah, that solves it. Yeah, and it, it, anything that makes it easy that you can, if you want, if money is such a big deal, pulling up on Google rather than having to search through pages of lore and common words in your Discord server for, like, <laughs> um, that makes it much easier kitty meow my kitty also was getting um restless so she i just had to open the door for her she had to go <laughs> she's like it's time to get out mom <laughs> um but yeah just have it and, and specific dice spots that's a that's a great one for it sometimes we do randomizers from numbers mm -hmm. um especially if we have like especially in events which we'll talk about more too um yeah. but all of these tools that are accessible that are are used in tabletop usually do solve the problem yeah. Um, but the reality is, is that your average player, eight times out of ten, won't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to write their characters, you know. They just want to yeah. write their characters, and and, and they're just not really can, interested. And like, and I won't say that. Not, I I will also say that there's probably a time where every single, every single player you have will come to you with a question about something that you didn't write. And every single player will do this at some point in their RP, in the RP, and that is okay because then again, nine out of ten of the players, and usually actually ten out of ten of the players, mm -hmm. will sit there and accept it doesn't matter. Yeah. Or will accept I didn't think of it. Like they, that is an acceptable answer that most people will accept. Yeah, I don't think you should be scared to say I don't know, but I don't think you should be scared to say I don't know in any context. I know a lot of people struggle Absolutely. with that. Um, we, you know, a lot of role players are, are A plus students who cannot accept a B in their lives, you know, so, um, so they might be a little bit nervous to say, I don't know, but I've never had any problem when I tell people like, well, I don't know. What do you think? Um, everybody pretty much is always like, okay with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I think and that, I oh, sorry, go ahead. And I think that's also part of the culture in which you build. Uh, mm -hmm. your RP and I know we've talked about this a lot of times and that it's it is the culture and how you accept criticism within your RP um, that really shows how other people can treat other people within it but most I mean as long as you build a friendly community within your RP most people will be okay with mm -hmm. sitting there and saying I don't know yeah most um, people will be and fine if, and, if, and, if, and if people do insist on sitting there and trying to find defined answers Mm -hmm. Then you ask why. You ask, you do what basically Karen said, which is like, does this matter to just you or is this a whole RP issue? Yeah, or does it even matter to you at all? Sometimes people want to make a big deal about stuff that they won't even engage with. You know, it's like, does this have anything to do with your character? No. Okay, well, then what, like, why? Yeah, um, and, and getting to that, getting to that is totally fine. And if it does matter, 
then handing that off to somebody else is perfectly acceptable too. Mm -hmm. Especially if it matters to their plot in particular that they're like, no, this person is like a con artist, so really needs to know how this all works, how the money system works. It's like, okay, then figure sure. it out. You then what me. what do you want? Like then what do you then what do you want? And that's then then that's canon. Because that's you're you're who it matters to, so you should make yeah, it. Yeah, if if you're gonna consistently write it, then yeah, I'm gonna build something for it. But guess what's who's gonna build it? You are. Yeah. And we actually have a lot of success with that, but we also attract like people that, that want to add to the world, you know, because yes. we set up our role plays that way. So typically people are like, hell yeah, I'll make it. Sounds great, mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> um, I ask myself that question. The question sometimes is, this only matters to you. God, God damn, damn it, it, let it go. Well, actually, that's a great segue. Yeah, you to our next point. <laughs> let it go. Perfect transition. Let it go. <laughs> the other thing that I think mods and creators of plots do that hold on too tight to the shit that they create. It's mm -hmm. again, putting on that therapist cap, going back to our control issues, accepting that we all have them because we're all writers and letting and sitting there and just like, gotta let it go at some point. Mm -hmm. No one wants a mod who is a stickler to the lore, who is a stickler to the plot. Yep. Um, there, there is a delicate balance because no one wants a mod who doesn't give a shit about what they wrote. Mm -hmm. Um, but there also needs to be like, and like we talked about a little bit earlier too, where people are scared that they're going to get it wrong. No one wants a mod that creates that environment. Yep. For sure. Let your people get it wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it's okay if they say the wrong planet or if they mess something up, or if they confuse something up, they're human, and frankly, their characters are human. So making mistakes is a very normal thing. Yep, 100%. Um, if you are going to be certain... ...something that you worked hard on on your give-a-shit list, <laughs> um, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Yeah, absolutely, you will. It's still freaking Christ. My sound alerts are broken again. Of course no! they are. I, they break. They constantly break. I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, okay. Let me get this while going for for Bree. <laughs> Bree, you deserve the wow. There we go. <laughs> I'll figure. I'll have to figure that out. I don't know why that keeps breaking. I'm so sorry, guys. <clears throat> Every single stream. I even tested it beforehand, and it still broke. I feel like at this point, it's just part of the branding. I guess. <laughs> I'm just going to have broken sound alerts. I don't even know. But they do work sometimes, you know? What do, what do we come What do we come to the Enter Stage Window stream for? Broken sound alerts and Landon being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> and oh, my gosh. And looking cute in her bunny hat. That's what we come to the Enter Stage Window for. Ah, oh, thank you. I do appreciate that. <laughs> oh, my God. And Jojo just did another one and they're not, yeah. they're not freaking working. I'm sorry, guys. I don't, hang on. Give me one second. Let me see if I can get this working. <laughs> just make a list of the ones that you're going to need by the time we do the good news. There we go. Okay. Oh, gosh. Let me play this rip for you. There we go. Okay, we're back. Sorry, every time I have to mess with the alerts, it goes to a, a screen that doesn't have the microphone set up. So it's oh, like all no. jacked up. Yeah. All right. So, so they can hear us now? Yeah, they can hear us now. Okay. Oh, man, I was being really clever off camera. That's not true at all. <laughs> um, no, it was funny. It was funny. Um, let's get back on track, though. I'm sorry about the sound alerts, guys. I will have to figure out what the hell is going on with that and why they break every single time. But yeah, no, my if you're gonna if you're gonna be a mod creating your own lore, learn how to be Elsa. Just let that shit go. Yes, 100. percent Because the thing is, is that whenever you are opening your role play. All of a sudden, you've got all these other people, right, that are going to want to engage with it. And if you are holding on too tightly, then they can't. 
right? They can't engage with it because then they have to constantly be going to you, constantly be thinking like, well, if I add this, is it going to upset the mods? Da, 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 da. And then they're just not going to engage with it. So if you hold on too tightly and you've got like a very like freeform game like we tend to make, then what you end up with is paralysis and all of your players will suddenly um, not be able to write because they have no idea what's going to upset you, you know, what's going to potentially break the lore. They're not going to add anything to it because they're like, well, what if, you know, Karen doesn't like it, you know? Um, so I just think I, when it comes to text-based roleplay, you cannot feel like that ownership over your lore or your game is just not going to work. Did Elsa yeah. really let it go? No, but Hans did. Ah! <laughs> True. Um, <laughs> you get that reference. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that 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 holding on too tightly. I also think that that moves into kind of the other thing that is about this, which is about letting it go in general. Um, is if you do not allow people to surprise you, you will not have a role play story. No. Um, part of Role playing is that improvisational surprise of what happens to characters. Yep. And if you are so hyper focused on the lore, on the plot that you've created, on the dynamics that you demand from your characters, if you're so hyper focused on all of that, then people are not going to be able to surprise you. Yep. And you want people to be able to surprise you because it is, as a group RP, it is a fan fucking tastic feeling to sit there and go someone make a throwaway comment or just you know shoot their shot at mm. some random fucking plot and it suddenly take off like cultists i hope the people i have no idea where the cults came from like, I <laughs> maybe, maybe, but i hope whoever just decided that cults existed like i hope they're feeling so fucking proud right now and so fucking excited about this rp because they were able to like be a part of that creation of it mm -hmm. yep and that's what you want to create you want to create that type of thing in your game um where where people feel like empowered and and excited to add to what's going on yep and, sure. and you, you you're part of your job as a mod is to inspire people is to get people excited it's mm -hmm. not to create a, it's not just to create a world it's to create a world that people want to play in yeah that people want to write it yeah um, exactly. and i think that that's part of the balance and it makes it really hard if you are trying to overbalance one way or the other mm -hmm. misty gave me a new vibe i was vibing before but i'm double vibing now yeah exactly brie i think actually zine started the cult thing and then once that happened with gabe um we realized <laughs> that we it's like a zine thing. <laughs> And then once once we had that happen, we realized like, oh, we have to have somebody playing Misty, you know, who was the open character that was the Alf, so that um, Gabe has some competition, right? So I think that's basically yeah. how it started. Wait, there are two there are two cults happening. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of. We already had like Alfheim and um and the Alf and all of that stuff. Like that was already yeah. a thing. It's just we weren't actively engaging with it. Well, I, I knew that one. Okay. I, I Things are becoming more clear. See, I told Karen off camera before this thing started. I will either, two things will either happen. Either I will catch up and figure out what the fuck is happening, or I will eventually give it an ask for help. <laughs> one of those two things. I refuse to do either of those two things. I will figure it out on my own. But just know that if I come to you and I'm just like, what's happening with the cults? I've given up. It's fine. <laughs> 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 oh erica you ask too many definitive questions i cannot answer that for you <laughs> the elf is the elf, <laughs> the elf, is the elf. um yeah. jane <laughs> so I, I think that being able to have that ownership and being able to let your members and part of your community surprise you with i mean your job is to take this thing and then let people write with it Mm -hmm. So feel proud of that. Feel like being able to sit there and go, I created a world that people are inspired by. Mm -hmm. um, let them be inspired. Yeah. Let it happen. Let it. Let them do what's let making them excited. It happen. <laughs> And I think that for a lot of a lot of people, um, when they're when they're newer 
to kind of creating role play plots and running role plays that that's like a big pitfall to fall into um so you know it's definitely something that that i've said in videos before and that i will harp on like if you feel that ownership like then you've already you've already kind of screwed it up for yourself so it's really important that you can kind of like get that feeling out and and if you and if you can't then to not act on it yeah um sorry that <laughs> the stream was the, that's such a cute animal <laughs> anyway i was got i got the wolf yes oh i was just like oh this, there's fire happening anyway sorry i'm I, trying to attract one he, that's why there's a gajillion of these pigs but like a new one won't come so the for the people who didn't know this before my oh well, my internet sucked in my old place so I was never able to watch the streams mm -hmm. at the same time. I would literally, because it would just be blank or it would lag so much that I couldn't speak. So I literally would have it on pause and then just engage in the chat. So I've never actually seen Karen play these games. <laughs> <laughs> first time. This is the first time, except for maybe the first episode where you were on and you tried and it didn't work and we gave up yeah. very quickly. That was like literally it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I was like, didn't want to watch myself on the delay. So it was really difficult. Yep. But yeah, anyway, back to the thing. Um, yeah, being able to build this world that you are inspired by. And then the other thing, which I kind of hinted to uh, a little while ago, but I think that needs to be reset. Um, you don't have to do this alone. Nope. Uh, if you start to feel that this is too overwhelming or if you become too attached, because that's the other thing I put myself and put my plots and put my heart and hard work into things. And if people are not playing the way that I want them to, sometimes I can take it personally. Mm -hmm. If you do that and you find yourself to be that kind of person, asking for help so that you don't get too attached to something is perfectly reasonable for that too. Yeah. Like it's, it's fine to have a gut check and be like, am I overreacting to this? Like, is this really Absolutely. a thing? Like, is this what's happening? Or am I taking something personal that has nothing to do with me? And nine times out of ten, it has nothing to do with me. But I also sit there <laughs> for, for me, for me personally, it's like I worked really fucking hard on this thing and this potential. And this isn't. And this isn't just like. This is not actually just RP things. This is, <laughs> I do like, oh my god, when I'm teaching, I'm a teacher, so sometimes I work really fucking hard on a lesson plan, and then kids are just not engaging with it. It's like, fuck, is it me? Am I the failure? Yeah, or, um, that and that's it. <laughs> it's a shitty feeling to stand up in front of a classroom and like, you have ten blank stares staring Absolutely. back at you, and it's like, cool, I guess this lesson is boring, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and the RP does the same exact thing, where you're like, here's a thing, and then everyone's like, cool, throws it over their shoulder, never looks at it again. And they're like, like, don't care, bye. <laughs> it, it sometimes really sucks, so sitting there and being like, okay, I don't want to get too attached to a thing, let me reach out to other mods to help build this. Yeah. L like, you do the same thing, you sit yep. there and you build this world, and then you're like, okay, people, come on in, let's tear it apart. <laughs> yeah, I have to, right? Because you never know. Yeah. You never know if it's really a good idea or not. So it's like, okay, well, here's the here's the bones of what I definitely want. What can we add to this? What can we take away? What still needs to happen, etc, etc, etc. Ty, what's your star sign? Um, <laughs> no, <that's a> <laughs> You don't have to tell me. Anyway, um, <laughs> but no, really. Uh, yeah, no, being able to to have people tear it apart to make it better, that's mm -hmm. part of our process. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to encourage any mod who's building for a group to have that process with other people, too. And that can be with close RP friends. It could be with people who eventually come into the RP, and then you sit there and go, hey, what can we expand upon, even if the game has already started? Mm -hmm. um, there are plenty of ways that you can ask for help. Absolutely, and all of that's valid, too. All of it is valid. So, oh yeah, Naomi says that we have to add boners. Um, okay, sure. That's fine. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Um, and that's what I have on plot. That's, yeah. That's my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I think we basically got through what we wanted to say. So we're going to expand on this um, in, a, in a future episode where we talk about events specifically and running events for your role play, because that ties so much into plots. So y'all definitely stay tuned and take look out for that episode. If this is kind of spoken to you, then I think you probably want to be involved in the event episode as well and, and hear for that and kind of hear what we have to say for that. 
Um, yeah. but yeah, when it comes, when it comes to plots, like this is, this is one of the most important things you can do as far as running your role play goes outside of like the social aspect. Right? Because, <laughs> of course, the most important thing you can do is making sure everybody's getting along well enough to write. But next to that is the plot so that everybody stays inspired, that everybody stays engaged, that everybody feels like they're creatively fulfilled. And this is the way as a, as a mod you can do that without actually like controlling what people are doing. Yes. And that um, it's a lot of fun. You get to build the stories that you want to build. Yep. Even exactly. if you don't, even if you're not like directly in hand with them, you can mm -hmm. build an environment in which the stories you want to see be told can exist. Exactly. Yeah. You just you set it up. It's kind of like an um, if you build it, they will come, which is not necessarily true. But you have to at least build something that they they want to come to first, right? If you build it nicely, they will come. If you build it, not. if you build it and advertise it properly, then they there will come. <laughs> yes. Before it was it before it was God. This time it's social media. It's fine. Yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> Yep. All right. Are we ready to are we ready ready to do the the article for today? Should yeah. I save and stop? Okay. Let me save the game. If you could post that in the chat, please. That means I have to find one. <laughs> oh no, Landon, slacking. No, fine. Why? Why did you reveal the secrets? Did I pick it five minutes before? <laughs> I can't get it. Um, if you wanted to, I don't know if people want to see the candle. The candle is on Discord, so I don't know if you want to pull. If you can pull that up, yeah, there, yeah, I can pull that up. I can pull that up I'm for sure. I'm very proud of my little candle. It's very. It's gonna be very cool. I'm wait. I can't wait to see it. Okay, let's do. Let's go over to desktop. Let me clear out the chat box so it's not in the way. Okay, here we go. So I've got the article, but before that, I'm going to go. You put it in media share, right? Is this it? Yeah. Okay. That's where it was supposed to be. Okay. I follow the rules. Thank you. <laughs> here we go, guys. Oh my gosh, look at this. Okay. Wait, what is this inside the candle? I'm looking at the first it's picture. A rose. Oh. Oh, so as you burn it, it's going to reveal the rose. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and it's got, okay, and you've got tiers of colors. Yeah. Oh. And it be burning. Oh my gosh, look at that. It looks so cute on your shelf. Thank you. I love this. And what, okay, I'm so what there. smell did you put in it? Um, there is hydrangea. Mm -hmm. And that's the first layer. The second layer is cotton, I think. Okay. And the third layer is some sort of pea. Okay. Okay, so you're only on the first layer now, though, right? Yes. So it's not that strong of a scent, which I need to improve upon. But you know what? That's okay. If I got it, if I hit it right off the park on the first candle, I'd be impressed. I mean, um, right? Like, that would be insane. <laughs> so, of course, you got to have somewhere to grow from there. Yes. Yeah, her, so, yeah, her altar is really cute, isn't it? Isn't it, Erica? I like it. Altar. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so uh, I, am, I am happy with that. So the rest of these are purchased candles, right? It's only this one in the yeah. middle that you it's only, created. It's only the one in the jar. The other ones are are the witchy kind. Are you gonna Are you gonna start? Are you gonna try to do like the drip candles so that they don't have to go in a jar? Is that like a, a future potential goal? Maybe that sounds like a lot of work. I mean, I think it is, but <laughs> <laughs> but I was just curious. I like the idea of it, but I also need to recognize my own limitations. Mm -hmm. And what I have available to me right now is candles in a jar. Um, mm -hmm. And I will, I will take that and do that for now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I think the for the for like a very first candle, this looks amazing. Like I don't even know. Like I don't know if I would even be doing something like that. Although, like I literally just watched the videos. I never thought, you know, oh, I'm gonna actually go make my own ca candle. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me so i love it okay let me pull over the article all right porpoises rebound in a big way following california ban on indiscriminate fishing nets yes what? So, oh. for those of you who don't know 
Um, this is a very important thing that uh, we were bamboozled about a year and a half ago telling us that straws are what's killing our environment and the sea turtles. And actually, that's a fucking lie. 90% of our trash in our ocean come from fishing nets and fishing lines. Yep. So. It's something like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, like plastic straws and other plastic like consumer things is like 0.01% of the plastic in the ocean. But literally, yep. I'll do the, I'll, instead of exaggerating, I'll do the real statistic. 40, 40% is oh, is yeah it's 40 percent is waste plastic from fishing yep. okay it has nothing to do with what you individually consume okay it has everything to do with what large corporations are doing and since it's in the ocean fishing contributes to the most of it if we regulated what kind of plastics that fishing boats could use and could dump and exactly how they were supposed to dispose of them if they were using and all that stuff then we would reduce the amount of plastic in the ocean by 40%. Like imagine how amazing that would be for our oceans. Yep. And I know, I know a huge other percentage is um, one time use plastics, like, uh, you know, squirt bottles for cleaning solutions and stuff like that. That's true. Like, yeah. That's another huge part of the percentage, but the fact that it's fishing companies alone is what's responsible for the pollution in our, like 40% of the pollution in our oceans is ridiculous and that we were being told that it was straws from starbucks <laughs> yeah it's so stupid um, straws are nothing like straws plastic forks plastic knives stuff like that it's nothing it's like 0.01 percent or something stupidly small like I, that absolutely it is something that you can control and if you wish to change it there is no shame in there however shaming other people because they choose not to is actually really a waste of time it's kind of like veganism mm -hmm. anyway that's landon's hot take um, <laughs> oh <laughs> man you're gonna leave us like leave it with it like that <laughs> we're gonna have to get into that hot take at some point <laughs> oh, I don't it with anybody um but i liked this because there was a um, ban and or change on fishing line in California mm -hmm. and um, because of that there has been an increase uh, and it's certainly not any or increase in wildlife and decrease as far as like how many animals have been harmed by these products. I love that. Um, which I think is extremely important. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it really, really is. Like, uh, this is the kind of stuff that's going to make a difference. Stuff like this. Yeah. And then technically, all of this is not new. Um, like, things happened in 2012. And it, it's been slowly improving. However, it shows that it works. And mm -hmm. it shows that it is better. And there are other states and countries in this world that do not require this sort of um, requirements that California law uh, requires. Mm -hmm. Maine being huge one of them um which is a problem here in the state so i think that it's important to recognize and see yeah for sure so it looks like so they implemented it in 2012 and just to give you all some numbers it looks this sentence here says it grew from 570 individuals in 1990 to over 4,000 by 2012 and i guess it's doing even better and better now so yep. this is amazing i love that we we need more regulation on this type of stuff you know that's what's going to really make a huge difference for our oceans Absolutely. and for our planet it's yeah, and and to is it just like as a friendly Saturday afternoon reminder to keep corporations and reminders that corporations are actually the things that are evil in this world and not our fellow humans. Exactly, exactly. Because individuals, individuals do care. You know what what yeah. hap what causes people to not care is when they get in these collectives where the main motivation is profit. You know, individuals are not that cruel. It's the system. Yep. Yep. So. All right, so so let me switch over back over to webcam only. Okay, so that's it. That's our show for today. Plots and and how to make a plot and all of our tips for making that work and and do well. I hope you guys feel inspired. I hope we have some people. Um, I know when we talked about advertising last time. Uh, Lunar in particular was like, oh, this makes me so jazzed to go make a new RP. So hopefully we have somebody that feels kind of like that way a little bit today. Um, I think that would be awesome. I agree. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be, I would be inspired by that. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, the applause worked that time. Yay. Yay! <laughs> Thank God. Any last, any last words? Um, no, I really just think that, uh, that's, you know, when it comes, when it comes to this stuff, it's really about, you know, knowing wh who exactly you're looking for, for your role play and creating a plot that matches who you're looking for 
right? Yeah. So we have a very good idea of who we're looking for, which is why we make the plots the way that we do. So if you're looking for those type of people, follow everything that we said. If you're looking for a different type of person though, like reverse engineer what that person is looking for and make your plot that way. Yeah. That's also something important to recognize is that we know what we want. So when we're talking about what to do, we're coming at it from that perspective mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that we are not just because we are like the queens of role play. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are, but right. We're oh, wait, that's Landon's line. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, please, please, stop please stop stealing my humor. Um, <laughs> but I think that it's, it's incredibly important to recognize that like, yeah, we know what we want and what we expect. And that's why we're talking about it this way. If you have another way of doing it and it's working for you, awesome. We'd love to hear it. Put it in the comments. Do uh, comments on the VOD this way. Make mm -hmm. a conversation starter in the cafe. We will gladly engage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and people want to hear it because people have different expectations of RP than we do. Yes. But um, for us, that this is, this is the true way that it works for us. Yep. And it's take what you will. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Take what's useful, throw out the rest, right? For all of our advice, really, but for this in particular. Um, so one other thing that I wanted to say is if, if you're, if you typically close out now, hang on for a few minutes because I am trying to get better at being a good streamer and networking with other streamers. So we're actually going to go raid somebody, um, at the end of this that I watched a little bit of their stream yesterday and I thought it was pretty good, pretty entertaining. Um, they were playing cyberpunk and it looks like that they're, that he's playing cyberpunk again. So we're going to do that. So even when it goes to like ending soon, hang on for just a second. Cause I'm going to, we're going to do a raid when that screen pops up, I'm going to put that in. Um, okay, with that being said, let's still do our outros, though. Uh, Landon, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and not Facebook, but Twitter uh, at Land in Maine, L-A-N-D-I-N, Maine, like the state. It's a pun. It's cool. I'm funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of pictures of my new house and my cats on my Instagram stories and I do mostly lip syncing passive aggressive videos on my TikTok. I love so your TikTok. You it's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> me, uh, go follow me over there. I will do most trends that anybody tells me to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. And she's really funny. I, I love Landon. I love your TikTok. I mean, she's mainly the, the reason that I made my TikTok. Two reasons. One is Landon. The other is because I got so tired of reading all this advice that was saying, like, if you're a content creator, you should be on TikTok. And I was like, Ugh. but then I saw Landon doing hers, like, and I thought hers were really funny. And I was like, well, you know what? Maybe I can do it. Maybe I can do it. <laughs> and it's fun. <laughs> yes. So, okay. So where, where can you find me? Right here, of course, on this Twitch channel. We stream on Saturdays, which is Interstage Window, which is my conversation show. Usually Landon is here. Um, sometimes we have guests and all of those sorts of things too. It's like a deep dive on role play topics. On Thursdays, that is my variety stream where we do uh, whatever the hell I feel like. That's at 6.30. All of these times are Eastern. Uh, on Thursday, this coming up, we are going to be playing more Final Fantasy X. I know I left y'all on a cliffhanger last time where uh, Yuna was kidnapped. So we're going to go save Yuna in our next artistic license stream on Thursday. Also, I have my YouTube show, which is called Spare Room. That's like my scripted, discreet writing advice. All of this is down in the about, by the way. If you go down below the Twitch and click the about, you'll find links to all this stuff. Uh, also, my main social medias are... Twitter and TikTok at It's Karen Terry on both of those. You get a mix of advertising and various other things. So for Twitter, it's advertising and hot takes, right? For TikTok, it's advertising and silly stuff, right? Because it's TikTok and it's very chaotic there. And uh, I have all, all the normal ways to support me if you want to do that. You know, Patreon, subscribing to the Twitch, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Y'all know the drill. You don't need me to tell you. And all of it is down in the about. Okay. And that's it. That's all. Um that's all I had for you today. No, we have one more thing very we quickly. Do? Oh. oh, yeah. I would just like to remind everybody and not remind anybody, but like announce it that two Saturdays from now, not next Saturday, but we'll talk about like Valentine's weekend Saturday. Yes. We are doing Among Us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means if you would like to play with us, take the day off of work. Come join. Just yeah. wanted to throw that in there and give you plenty of time to tell your bosses, fuck it, I'm not coming in on a Saturday because I'm going to play Among Us with cool people yeah. and murder my friends. <laughs> we have we have the chillest among us okay so it's it's not it's not highly competitive it's very fun it's very chill 
Um, so that's Saturday, the Saturday right near Valentine's Day, we're going to be doing it. And the ticket to come in is you have to share a example of your favorite ship dynamic. Okay, so be thinking about what y'all want to share <laughs> for that. <laughs> we're we're gonna get we're gonna get problematic. Okay, that's what's gonna happen. Let me just let me just tell y'all now. <laughs> I'm always off, but I've not yet played Among Us. Well, perfect time because we have really chill games, and we will teach you. So um, we are a perfect yeah. group to play with for that if it's your first time. I am terrible at Among Us. Landon is actually pretty decent. I'm not. So <laughs> I like to my friends. I also play every Friday, so I cheat. Oh yeah, um. you practice a lot. <laughs> okay, well for real now, that's it. That's the show. So again, you're gonna see the ending soon screen, but hang on for a second because we're gonna do a raid. All right, bye guys. Don't forget bye. to make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. All right, see y'all soon. See y'all on Thursday. <laughs>